Are you tired of having a bad posture when you do kata and kumite? Maybe for some of you, when you try to move with speed, you feel like your upper body is not stable. Sometimes you're tilted over, sometimes you're leaning back. Even when you learn to move with stability, now you're too stiff and slow. This is because you haven't unlocked this one body movement. After learning this, you'll become smoother, lighter, and faster. The main topic for this chapter is going to be moving from the pelvis. So why am I advising you guys to move from the pelvis? First, let me explain why you are tilting over. Basically, the answer is you are moving from the leg, which is not positive at all. Let me explain. Let's say you are in your front stance and you are just taking a step forward. Simple movement, right? If you find yourself doing this, or let's say you go into a back stance like this, those people, you are probably doing this. I'm gonna exaggerate. This. You are using your back leg, you're pushing off of this, and you're trying to punch. This does generate power to a certain amount. However, like you see, you cannot move from here. This is the only thing you can do. Also, you are telegraphing a lot. You're going, okay, I'm gonna punch you. Okay, it's very obvious. Also, you go up like this. So there are so many demerits on kicking with the back leg, but I'm not gonna blame you. This is how everybody is moving if they don't do martial arts. Uh, let's take the example of um, just starting your run. When you're gonna start running, you usually kick off with the back leg, right? And that's no problem because you can just keep unrolling your leg forward. However, the difference between running, starting your dash, and punching is the dash, you keep on going, but the punch, you have to concentrate your energy onto that certain, uh, I would say, pinpointed area here. So that's the difference. So what are you supposed to do? Like I mentioned in the last video, you have to move from the pelvis. What do I mean, right? So the before was this. The after, moving from the pelvis is from here. Okay? You want to move from the hip. There are so many merits to this. Basically, your limbs, your hands, your legs are all connected to your torso. And what controls the torso is your pelvis. Let's try this one drill. I'd like you to stand up facing the side. Okay? And if you have a belt, I'd like you to grab the belt. If not, uh, just grab your shirt or your pants, whatever you have on your body. And I'd like you to pull that forward like this. Okay? And I'd like you to feel this falling sensation. Right? And I think you'll notice that your leg just automatically uh, stepped in. This is because your body doesn't want to just fall from the head. Uh, this is just a natural mechanism for the body. However, when you do this, you become stable. But try the other case. Try kicking from the leg, okay, and step in like this. As a result, I'm sure you'll find your, your head leaning forward. This is the biggest difference, moving from the leg or moving from the foot versus moving from the pelvis, okay? So this is the biggest difference between moving in from the foot versus moving in from the pelvis. Now guys, let's activate the secret principle of moving from the pelvis. I'd like you to go down into Seiza. After you go into Seiza, all right, we are going to be doing two different movements. Number one, moving back. Number two, moving forward. Okay, start neutral from here. I like you to picture, or I guess grab the end of your belt, so right here, okay, and pull the belt back like this, and have your pelvis lean back and your back, your spine, relax like this. You don't have to stay straight, relax, okay? From here now, this camera, grab the front belt, okay, and pull that forward, vroom, like this. Back and forward, back, forward, back, forward. Let's do this slowly, okay? Right, back and forward, back and forward, Boom. back, forward, back and forward. The more dynamic you can move, the more dynamic you can take your steps as well, okay? Now, let's make that smooth. Back. Front, back, front, back, front, back, front, okay? This, 
I'm sure it's, it might start hurting for some of you, so you can stop there. Let's give it a try on the chair as well. As a Japanese, we're used to sitting on the floor. So seiza, that sitting down position we did before, is somewhat, I would say, familiar to us. But I'm sure you are more used to sitting on a chair. So let's try to do the same drill on the chair, okay? So sit down, you know, uh, just naturally. Make sure just your feet is flat on the floor, okay? So don't be like this, or don't be here. Just stand up comfortably with the back off, the, off here and sitting straight. From here, same thing. I'd like you to first pull the belt back and relax your spine, your hips, and like this. The, I would say a lot of people would call this a bad posture, but do this on purpose, okay? From here, now you're gonna pull this and sit up, okay? Front, back, front, back, front. You can add the support of the hand. I'll do it without it, one and two back and here. Uh, no need to have your abs like ah, tucked in like this. No need to do that. The purpose is to have the pelvis at this angle. So no need to go <clears throat> like this with your abs being so tight, okay? And then sit up. It shouldn't be such a hard exercise. Just a relaxed, just a change of position. That's what it is. Okay, now and to connect the movement. Each knee. Sun, okay, back and forth. She, back, forward. Go, back, forward. Lock, sit, hot, cue, and do. Okay, nice work. Now, let's get it closer to karate. Let's give it a try in a front stance. Now, go into your front stance, guys. Uh, make sure. Uh, it can be whatever front stance that you do in your style. However, let's not get it too wide, okay? When it's too long like this, you can't really move like this uh, back and forth. So have it slightly shorter than your normal zinc that's your front stance, okay? So now that you've gotten into your front stance, weight on the front leg, we're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna pull, get yourself back, and then pull forward, forward, back, forward, like this, back, Make sure when it comes back, your knee, your back knee has to be bent, okay? Keep your head at the same level. Pull the hip back, bend the knee, ankle. That's why we did these stretches at first. From here, get this pulled forward and forward like this. Back, forward, back and forward, back. Do it smoothly, each knee. Sun, I recommend you to assist your body with the belt. She, or with any clothes. Goal. Okay, switch, let's do the other side. Same thing, make sure when you come back, your knees are bent, okay? Ready? From the front, itch, knee, sum, she, and goal. Like this, okay, shake it off. So you learn how to get the hip forward and how to get the hip back, okay? When you get the hip forward, you use this position to physically go forward and to attack forward. For instance, a front kick, okay? So let's give it a try in a Maigiri front kick. So go into a front stance, get the hip here. That pulled, pushed in, or that pulled forward stance, uh, position, okay? From here, get the knee up. This should be pretty easy. Okay, and you can flick the leg forward. Okay, however, get the hip in the back position on purpose. From here, try to get the knee up. I mean, it's really heavy, right? Like this. But you know, you might think this is silly, silly, but I'm sure some of you are kicking like this. You're trying to, you know, your sensei tells you, get the knee higher, higher, higher. You try, but you end up doing this with the hip back, wondering why you don't have a good posture. This is the exact reason. Keep it here, okay? Or you can keep the belt straight like this, not such a strong pull, just a slight pull, and flick the leg forward. This is much, much easier, okay? Let's give it a try while stepping in, okay? Same thing, front stance now, and we are simply going to 
step in like this simple movement. From here, we're going to take it step by step. Step one, front stance. Step two, back, okay, and forward, okay? Basically, um, getting your hip to that front position. Okay, number, uh, I would say step three, pull the belt strongly to the front. And I like you to feel how your pelvis is getting pulled forward, okay? Step four, uh, as the pull happens here, boom, you start feeling the stretch right here on the back leg, okay? Before you feel that stretch, you tuck the front leg forward. Like this. this should be the, I would say, the trigger that gets your back leg to the front. It is not this. It is this movement that's triggering this, and you step forward. So basically, step five is feeling the pull, tuck in, and go in all the way till the end. Okay? So let's give this a try slowly five times. Ready? This doesn't have to be fast. Getting that inner internal or that inner feeling is much more important. Ready? Itch. Okay. Knee. Sum. She. Last one. Up. Nice. What not to do is this. This, you're moving, you're, you're, I would say, releasing, or you are uh, contracting the back leg too late. Like this. You gotta contract it when, the, when you start feeling the pull. Another bad example is this pull not lasting till the end, meaning you've done it successfully up to here, but then it's gone. You wanna keep it all the way to the end, okay? So try the other side. Step one, front stance. Step two, okay, get it to the front. Step three, feel that forced pull, okay? Step four, before you feel that too stretch, uh, too much stress on that hip joint, tuck, tuck it in. And step five, step forward. Right, five times. Itch, nice and smooth. Knee, if you feel like your stance is getting longer, Get it shorter for this drill. Some. She. Last one. Angle. Okay. Now, you can use this for any, any scenario where you step forward or when you do any technique to the front. Now, let's apply the backwards momentum, okay? Basically, this. This is, I'm not saying this is useless. There are scenarios when you can use this, such as you stepping back. You want to use this here. Let's take it step by step. Have some room behind you. Front stance, okay? From here, I like you to, step one is uh, getting your hip to that neutral position. Make sure it's not at the back yet. It's here. Step two, I like you to bend your back leg and shift the weight back like this. Step three, from here, you relax that hip this way, okay? Bend, relax. Step four, when you relax it, the front leg is gonna get stuck. So just like when we step forward, before it gets stuck, I like you to tuck it in, like this. And step five, step back. This is gonna be much more smoother than going like this, okay? So let's try slowly. Shift, lose the balance, and back up. Ready? It. Knee back, lose the balance, and back. Sum. She back. Last one. Up. Okay, other side. Ready? Itch. Knee. Sun. She. Angle. Just like this, okay? Now you learn the two movements of how to move from the pelvis. 
moving forward and moving back. In the next video, let's apply it to your Kihon. If you like to learn these small details that's gonna take your karate to the next level, come check out the hidden karate principles for free for the first one month. Sign up from the link in the description.